Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight. Hope you're all well and you've had a good week. We certainly made some big progress last week and I'm really excited to show you this episode. This episode was one of my favourite detailing episodes to date on this series and the reason why is because it just brings everything to life. But we will get into that very shortly. Beforehand, let's have a look at what we worked on last week as a little bit of a recap. So last week, we pretty much finished the main area of the British seaside front. We finished this little restaurant area here in the corner. We added in some shops. We added in them beautiful terrace houses going up the uh, the bank, up the little hill as well. A little bit of a, a shed area as well we worked on, which I thought worked really, really well. And on that front, I would like to say thank you to everyone who commented on this video. There's a lot of new faces and old who have been commenting recently, so I really appreciate your time. And thank you to Mr. Tony who left a very nice comment. And well, yes, as your message says, this is a very nice place to build. If you want to try a new location for some inspiration, I would certainly check out the Isle of Wight. If you want to go down a rural, rural route anyway, it is highly recommended. And of course, if you want to be involved in this project, wait till halfway through the video and you'll have your chance to have your say on the island. As you guys know, I always like to hear what you guys want to see me build in future episodes. And Tom Webster has mentioned about doing the Black Gang Chine and Shanklin Chine at some point. These are his two favourite places as a child. Mine too as well, it's really, really nice. I'm trying to think of a way that we can incorporate that into the build. So yes, it is on the agenda, but Probably not yet a while, we'll certainly see what we can do though. And finally a very good comment from Addy here, mentioning we should add some of the southern vertic bus routes because nobody has transportation around the island. This is certainly something I do want to spend an episode on, depending whether you guys want to see it. So in the comment section below let me know if you want to see a complete episode where we just add some transportation, bus routes etc onto the island. Hit me up now and let me know your thoughts. But enough about that, let's move on to today's episode where we could be working on the detailing of the seafront. I know I kind of teased you in the last episode as to what we're going to be building today, but I couldn't wait. This was a really, really fun detailing exercise. I mean, everyone enjoys going on holiday, everyone enjoys the whole beach theme and all of that, and certainly so much more based on how we are surviving in this pandemic at the moment. So it was really, really pleasing to be able to get to this stage. And in my eyes and my mind at this point, the detailing of the seafront is gonna bring the whole thing together. The picture of that whole seafront on everything else that we've worked on so far is gonna really be nailed on once we get this down. But before we start working on that detail, I just wanted to add a few more um, surrounding rocks across here. We've also put a pathway across the highest tier of this mountain area or rocky area, whatever you want to class it as, just to sort of enclose it in and kind of right, paint that picture um, to make things look a little bit more pretty, I guess. Eventually, we'll be adding a lot of buildings on this um, highest tier, which eventually, fingers crossed, we will then have a ridiculously good landscape in um, view from from down below that's what my intentions are because that's how good it looks from real life and i really want to try and recreate that as best we can with these additional higher and lower level tiers so as i mentioned many times in this series i'm trying to make things look and feel realistic and the best way of doing that is to allow the simulation to run as it should do but on a detailed build now we know when we detail things and we use PO and we take away the facilities and the the real life feeling of what the default base game should be working and feeling like, we need to make some adjustments. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding in some pathways across the beach, which don't worry, we will be turning these into invisible paths eventually. But what I want to do here is kind of recreate the feeling of people walking across this beach not just to have static props of people, but I really want to get people walking and have a, a sense of a buzz and aliveness of this area. So we're doing a combination of the chair and deck, deck chair um, PPGs, event um, placements and generators, just to try and draw people into this location. Um, and we're gonna then also try and 
recreate the whole working staircase with an invisible path, which is normally quite difficult to do, but I think I've done it enough now to get that to work. Now, we obviously aren't gonna be reliant upon moving people and actual sims that are gonna function properly. So we do wanna put down some of these props and this whole catalog of people on the beach is absolutely perfect. Combined with these beach towels, it just works. It really does work. It's incredible how this becomes so much more lifelike just by putting this down. It really does give you that feel and that buzz of a beach, um, which is obviously the, the main goal here. And I was trying to think of what really do you find on a beachfront? And there's not a lot of variance when you're trying to define the whole beach. I mean, the main tip, the main part about the beach is people on it. So I really wanted to try and make that look and feel as realistic as possible. And with the combination of the invisible roads and paths and networks, it just works. Having these people walk along the beach as well just makes it feel so much more lifelike. I really cannot stress that enough. If you're doing this, it doesn't have to be on a beach, maybe it's on a park or something. Add in these invisible paths because they really do change the look and feel of any build that you're working on. And on that note, we had a very interesting comment by Gabby. Gabby says, awesome build as all the rest. Just curious, how functional is the island in terms of the game's mechanics? Thinking of Rico, demand, education, water, etc. Now this really did get me thinking because naturally when you're building a more sandbox game, you don't really care that I am currently minus $32,000 um, in debt. <laughs> um, and I use the Rico um, demand mod to make sure that everyone comes and we get you know commercial resident residential etc industrial on there um but i really like this point and it's also give me an idea for a special episode or perhaps a, a run of episodes where we take off those particular mods and we try and get a detailed project build such as this working like it should do in the vanilla game you know making sure that the rico demand is acceptable levels we have another a good coverage of education and i mean the water and electricity i have covered just to define that we have to make sure that there's water and um, electricity otherwise we don't get the people moving in so that is definitely a tick on behalf of this project but obviously in terms of money we're obviously not making money here so I certainly think that'll be a really good idea for a future episode. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you want to see the Isle of Wight in its natural state to see how and where we can improve it in terms of a default game? Let me know in the comment section below. So back into the build, we are working on what I can describe as almost, it's not, it's not so much a pier, but there's an area on the Shanklin beach where there's a little restaurant area, there's a few little shops, and it's kind of just poking just out of the seafront, and it just adds to the whole seafront look. I really do like that concept. Rather than having a complete uh, flat bank, this really does change things up quite dramatically um, by adding this in, and also by the shapes that I'm using, it does really change the appeal, and I'm really pleased with how this came out in the end. It just worked really well. We had a bit of trouble at first um, plopping these down and not interfering too much with the beach below it, as you can see here. But there is always ways around it. And you'll see that we tackle this a bit later on with those um, terraforming networks as well, which really have been key to this project. And I know key for quite a lot of others as well. For those of you who have been following the channel for quite some time, you'll know that recently we have been looking at the opportunity to allow you guys to build something for the series. Now I decided on a farmhouse because it's a relatively small build and quite easy for me to deploy on the island. And well, I wanted to get you guys involved in the series a little bit more. So if you are interested in building something like this, check out the description details below on how you can do so. This week we have Ping Yao, and this build really, really did take me by surprise. And when I say surprise, I mean when I looked at it, I saw so many stories within this tiny build. And that's what I love about City Skylines. It's when you see a story from what you're looking at in terms of what the creator has put down. Firstly, let's just say these puddle decals work so well in this build. 
We speak about them a lot, but they really do work well. Now, the storytelling, I mean, just look at this first scene. We have some chickens eating out of a dustbin. Now, who would have thought of doing something like that? <laughs> it really is incredible. The detail of the flower arrangement and all the moss against the house as well really, really does work well. I really do like it. It's even the detail of the um, hay bales here. They're out the way underneath the shed here, but they're still all there. There's been no scrimping or saving on this build. The detail levels are true to the eye. I really, really do like this build. Thank you very much for the submission. Another fantastic build now down on the Isle of Wight. So back into the build, we're basically just going to be copying over these uh, shops from what we created last week on the other side and place them down here. I wanted to try and recreate the gift shop experience and if you've been to the UK and you've come to a seafront, there is a very typical theme for a beach gift shop and it is pretty much what we're trying to put down here. Um, just an array of randomness normally in the shops to try and sell souvenirs off. You obviously have like the t-shirts, hats, sunglasses out the front as well. Alongside that, you normally have some sort of beach blow up inflatable item like a, a dinghy or some sort of a rubber ring, that sort of thing. Um, so just trying to recreate that, that feel and that vibe, which is um, very iconic to a, um, a UK beachfront here. And also I wanted to make the, uh, the detailing area here of the restaurant a little bit more appealing. So adding some of the uh, seats and tables really does change things the only downside to the theme we're using is the fact that we get this grass verge around it i did think about changing it but it would be kind of pointless because when we work on something else i want to keep the theme we have because having the grass around this part on the roads for example looks so much better and cleaner so Unfortunately, we're gonna to have to just leave that as it was. I did at the start of the video try and put down some of the sand decals on top, but it just wasn't so pleasant to see. So I kind of just left it as it is. Um, and perhaps you have another idea how we could make that look a bit more appealing. I also wanted to try and brighten this area up a little bit more. Um, and what I mean by that is put some plants down. <laughs> I mean, a beachfront tends to have some sort of, uh, of a flower arrangement somewhere along there just to break things up and certainly I thought next to this restaurant which you can imagine being quite a popular one being right on the seafront would have some some sort of a flower display or something to make it look a bit more attractive to passerbyers. I also wanted to put these fences in here as well I always believe adding in some sort of fence which makes sense on this area here because you know, you don't want to fall down a good 10 foot or whatever, whatever height these walls are into the sand. It wouldn't be the best start or end to anyone's holiday, <laughs> would it? Um, and these particular ones are perfect because we can bend around the irregular shapes that we have. If we tried to place down some of the props, it wouldn't have been too easy to do. These, on the other hand, work an absolute treat. I really do like the look of these they really do shape up well another thing that's quite common as well is you get these almost like shelters they're not bus shelters or perhaps they were at some point but there's these sheltered scattered across the seafront which just have chairs in and um, people just tend to normally sit there eat their fish and chips and whatnot and just enjoy the scenery it's normally for the elder um, generations who like to sit down and enjoy the sights of the seafront without having to be actually on the beach. So it's 
Something I wanted to recreate, and I'll ping a picture up on the screen now to give you an idea on what these look like in this area. So we've done it a little bit different. Obviously, we haven't got the exact looking props um, to suit that, but I think it still pulls off nicely. And we will be putting some bus um, stops along the way as well. So they could incorporate themselves into both sides of that sort of story. Also, there is always going to be a number of benches and bins scattered across the whole of this seafront, as well as these little shed um, buildings we've already put in. So just wanted to add that in and make it look a bit more realistic and um, just get that vibe of busyness going. And the thing I mentioned at the start of this video, trying to make it feel more alive and filling in these gaps, certainly we don't really have a lot of things to put in on the seafront. It's not really something that tends to, you know, have a lot of clutter it's quite simplistic um, along the way and these lights in particular are very identical to the ones that we see in the actual location we're building so what I end up doing slightly off camera is obviously removing the default lights that come with the roads and we're just going to use these on their own which I think work so much better Another thing I wanted to add is what we've already done at the very start of this um, this whole build is putting in these little crossings. So these are uh, obviously a, a crossing area for pedestrians, but also a way of slowing down the vehicles by having these speed humps um, on there. So I thought I wanted to add a few more and also I wanted to add in the pavement coming across a little bit stronger um, to really identify that purpose of you need to slow down and there are pedestrians possibly crossing over these areas and I think they look and work so well um, because then you kind of get the car parking zones out of the way it's kind of like it separates the two together um, it doesn't feel like such a big wide road which is what it doesn't feel like in the actual proper location obviously the car park um, well the car parking zones are normally always full as well certainly in prime time of the summer so I really like that concept and it just really emphasizes the whole look and feel of these speed bumps. Now, as you know, an episode of the Isle of Wight is not an episode until I do a little bit of PO work. <laughs> um, and what I wanted to do here is trying to recreate a custom sign. So there's a lot of these 20 mile an hour signs down this road, but they are very small and on little bollards, just as this is here. So I wanted to try and recreate that as best I could, just to make things look a bit more realistic. So very simple to do as you saw doesn't take long at all just a bit fiddly getting them in the right spot but all in all i think it worked out really really good and on that note that brings us pretty much now to the end of this episode really really pleased with how this has come about we have got this whole strip built the beach now feels more thrived more alive and it just really has that buzz about it now really really pleased with how this came about and how we've completed this next time round we're going to be working on the higher tiers of this location and eventually we're going to be creating one of the most amazing skylines that i have created very different to the typical skylines but one that i'm going to be super proud to show you but on that note we're going to leave things there thank you all very much for watching if you did enjoy the video please hit that like button and i'll catch you all in the next one thanks for watching all the best